right now to meet an imam or a cleric. So a religious guy, you know, the guys who run this country. And he's apparently kind of a hip imam. He's, he runs a coffee shop now. He was one of the guys who rebuilt Iranian cinema after the revolution. And so we're going to go hear his stories about that and about being the, one of the first religious leaders involved in film. بگید ما حدود 600 تا فیلم کوتاه و بلند توی 22 سال ساختیم و حدود 120 تا سینما یا گرفتیم آتیش زده بودن ساختیم و یا خریدیم و یا در واقع سینمای ایران بعد از انقلاب دوره جدیدی رو شروع کرد که پایه اون دوره در همین حوزه اندیشه و هنر اسلامی شکل گرفت طبیعتا رفتیم سراغ موضوع هایی که برای مردم نو باشه و جسارت آمیز باشه و ضمنن مشکلات اجتماعی مردم باشه یکی از موضوعاتی که برامون جذاب بود این بود که چرا مردم انقدر دوست دارن منان امریکا و یه موضوعی تبدیل شد به یه فیلم به نام آدم برفی Where are you from? Iran. Iran. Mm, Iran, yeah. I'm sorry. Huh? In fact, The Snowman is a film that was banned because it featured cross-dressing. It's a story about a guy that wants to move to America, so he dresses like a woman so he can marry an American man and get a visa. It's kind of like Tootsie meets Monty Python. And it was banned and shut down and no one could see it until the Ayatollah Khamenei saw it, laughed and said, hey, this is a great movie, I thought it was funny, it's fine. So they released it and it became the number one box office success in Iranian history. And this is the cleric that produced it. Okay. Thank you very much, Thank merci. You. I guess the Iranian film industry must be doing really well because when we were there, there were about 10 film sets shooting simultaneously. In fact, when we left the tea house, there was a film shooting in the park right across the way. They're about to crash that bike into that pond. Finally, after going to about 20 film sets, meeting all the producers and all the directors and all the actors, it was time for the big event of the year. It was time for the award ceremony at the film festival. Now, I'd been asked the night before to go accept the award for Guy Madden, who was going to win Best Experimental Documentary Film for his movie, My Winnipeg. Now, I'm Canadian, Guy's Canadian. We had interviewed him for VBS. So I said, sure, I'll go up and say, on behalf of Guy Madden, thank you very much. And they said, no, no, no. And I said, okay, I'll say, Guy says thanks. And they said, just accept the award. So I tweak on to the fact that they want to seem cosmopolitan. So I take the bait and say, great, I'll do it. So we're learning Farsi to accept the award. And we're going to be filmed by three national television stations doing so. So we're going to be fraudulent celebrities. The ceremony finally starts. There's all kinds of filmmakers there. There's government officials. There's the mayor of Tehran. And they're giving out the awards until finally, best documentary film comes up. Kargardan film Winnipeg, Shahreman, as Canada, Janab Aghaye Gai Madin, ro tashbit betamid betam. Thank you. Thank you for the festival and the people of Tehran. And Madeleine Chie, Man Irano, Haley Lusarat. So there's a standing ovation. People are freaking out. The mayor of Tehran comes up and hugs me. Newspapers and TV are going, Western director loves Iran. And I'm sitting there laughing my head off. It wasn't my award. Sorry, guy. Great film, though. That was our last night in Tehran. Pretty much all the stereotypes that we had seen in Western media before going to Iran were dispelled when we went there. We met empowered women, we met progressive clerics, we met beautiful actresses, we met fantastic filmmakers. And these fantastic filmmakers have been showing another side of Iran, a side of Iran that we're now seeing with the descent. 
So what we've seen for the past 20 years in Iranian cinema, what we saw when we were in Tehran, and what the world saw during the last elections, shows that what the Iranian people think and what the actual government does are completely different. And that hopefully we might be at the cusp of a new Iranian revolution.